the Ulalim Festival is envisioned to celebrate the history of the Kalingas, pride of identity, and their aspirations for prosperity, unity, and progress. A story goes that once among the highlands of the Philippines' Grand Cordilleras, a people of great might and grim ferocity gradually became known to their neighbors as the Kalinga. The name was not in any way cordial. Kalinga, to the different tongues of the mountainous region, had meant headhunter or enemy. Through the years, the Kalinga have come to accept this badge with uncompromising pride. The name is a reminder of their days of legend, when justice for every vanquished kin was delivered by a blow of an axe, or the flight of the spear of brothers out to redeem their family's honor. Recent history tells about the coming of Christianity to the formerly impenetrable mountain region. The Kalinga were among those who were converted to the faith, which renounced, if not condemned, any form of bloodshed. In time, the fearsome roar of the Kalinga as warriors and headhunters was reduced to a mere echo. Yet, the tag remained, eventually becoming the name of the very land they call their home. Today, in this era of unapologetic marriage of native culture and foreign ways, a different narrative has begun to emerge. In the 21st century, this has become the story of the province of Kalinga. February 14th, Valentine's Day to the rest of the consumerist world. The city center of Tabuk, the provincial capital, is swarmed by people. It is the foundation day of their province, or more accurately, it marks the parting of the erstwhile vast territory of Kalinga Apayao into two separate provinces, Apayao to the north and Kalinga to the south. Signed as a Philippine Republic Act, in 1995. Like in most places in the Philippines, the commemoration of this momentous signing and consequent autonomy is a very valid reason for a festival. In this annual event, citizens from all eight administrative divisions of Kalinga transform the capital into a sea of people. Since inception, this feat has been known as the Ulalim Festival. In loose translation, Ulalim means story in the Kalinga language, a fitting label for a celebration that displays in a multi-day summary all that is relevant to the Kalinga of today. Ulalim, again in 21st century Kalinga, is a coupling story, the marriage of native and foreign peculiarities. A visitor to the most recent festivities would have arrived to witness the following exposition. At the newly constructed gymnasium, a Catholic Mass is held. Kalinga elders line up for Holy Communion, a good majority, especially women, wear the traditional tattoo patterns that have made the Kalinga famous around the world. These are tattoos that would invoke good spirits to protect and strengthen the wearer, or at times, it is said, induce fertility. This juxtaposition of a Roman Catholic ceremony with the mysticism of indigenous body art proved to be a prologue of things to come. 
The Catholic priest goes around and in ritual sprinkling of water blesses the gymnation, still smelling of fresh concrete. This exercise would later give way to the sound of bamboo instruments and chanting, signaling the necessary performance of the Jomog or Jom Jomog ritual. The Jomog ritual is done to ensure that the evil spirits that may have taken shelter within the gymnasium during its construction will not inflict harm or illness upon all who enter the building. This chicken would be the sacrificial animal, its blood split later on the four corners of the edifice. Simultaneously, a Kalinga elder would chant in his native tongue the language understood by the spirits, assuring them of the authenticity of the ritual. The women are tasked to patch the gymnasium's walls with paste made of ground rice. To the spirits, the white marks are proof that the jomog is indeed being performed. The same matrons would chant afterwards, pleading with the spirits to leave the building, never to come back. As the ritual is completed, native rice cakes are distributed, signifying that the gymnasium is now safe and that everything that is eaten under its roof is now considered safe as well. The onset of progress has significantly changed the landscape of Kalinga, and with the change came the steady seeping of migrant culture into the local life ways. These young ladies of the province have involved themselves in one well-known exercise rooted in migrant culture. Modern beauty pageant. The best thing about it, though, is the category for native wear. Indeed, they have not forgotten to go back to their own roots. This is evident as well in all other events of the Ulanum Festival. Another thing to watch out for is the world-famous Banga dance, where able maidens balance several clay pots atop their heads, depicting the grace and stamina of Kalinga women as they go up and down the mountain slopes to fetch water with their Banga, or clay pot. The maidens are garbed in stylized traditional wear. Stylized, for the real clothing of the Kalinga of old did not require shirts of any kind for both men and women. As Kalinga clothing has evolved, so has their overall cultural outlook. These are young Kalinga dancers from the tribe of Lubuaga. A visitor may have been dumbfounded by this innovation, but behold, the local audience appeared to be snapping up the antic, at the very least, amused. Just outside the gymnasium, the festival's agro-industrial fair is in full bloom. All right. Among the stalls is the station of yet another group of youngsters out to reshape the Kalinga culturescape through their own brand of music.
They call themselves the Living Anitos. Karamihan sa mga kanta namin, yung mga natutulog ng ano, medyo nakalimutan na yung mga kalinga songs. Ginawan ko siya ng bagong lyrics. Ginawan namin siya ng bagong modernized instrument. The Living Anitos philosophy jibes with the times. Modernization in Kalinga is further evidenced by the presence of geologists and executives who have been welcomed by the province in their proposed exploration for the feasibility of a geothermal energy infrastructure. The move has been predicted to further boost Kalinga's energy independence and, in effect, their quality of life. As it is, Kalinga is already benefiting from the generosity of the land. The province is known as the rice granary of the Cordilleras, a territory of mountains and valleys nourished by the fabled Chico River. The terrain has shaped the people's history and virtue. Every Kalinga tribe has a set of values they hold sacred or important, as shown in the tribe's presentations or Pabpabuya during Ulalim's Festival of Festivals. From the tribal municipality of Tinglayan comes the Unoy Festival celebrating what they call the Good Native. From the tribal municipality of Lubwagan, the Laga Festival, celebrating the town's exquisite weave, Lubwagan is the weaving capital of Kalinga. From the tribal municipality of Pasil, the Salip Festival, Salip has come to mean dancing. From the town of Rizal, the Pinikpikan Festival, forefronting the renowned culinary curiosity of the Cordilleras. The Pinikpikan, an exotic stew of chicken or duck. From the tribal municipality of Balbana, the Manchachatong Festival, the annual gathering of the town's several sub-tribes. From the tribal municipality of Pinukpuk, the Pasingan Festival, here, the delegates enact the wedding celebration. From the tribal municipality of Tanudan, the Podon Festival. Podon, a ceremony, means to bind together. And lastly, the Matagoan Festival of the capital city, Tabuk. The delegates also simulate a podon, more known to outer circles as bodon, a peace pact ceremony. The Bodong, through the years, has resolved many a tribal conflict, that there has been no need for tribal wars and the consequent headhunt in the last few decades. The Bodong has become Kalinga's proof of a complete turnaround, from a people regarded as headhunters and enemies to the very stewards of peace in the Cordilleras. The story of Kalinga has come a long way continuing well into the modern world. It is a story of cultural marriage and a story of constant change. It is a story of forward-looking progress and as well of paying homage to the past. Through all its twists and turns, the story of the Kalinga is one that in good faith 
does not mind returning to where it all began.